Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1994 film Tammy and the T-Rex. And this is actually a reissued film that's available on Shutter streaming right now when this video is up. If, the, if I'm putting this video up on the 13th of January, then it's available streaming on Shutter. Uh, yeah, Monday, January 13th is when it's dropping on Shutter. As far as I know, I believe that's the first streaming appearance of this film. Now, uh, like I said, this is a reissue. This is done by Vinegar Syndrome. The original is a PG-13 film that came out in 1994, and this is the gore cut, so this is the R-rated version, as you would assume, for Shudder. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And um, no, uh, no spoilers on this one since, I mean, I know it's from 1994, but the gore cut is not, and this is kind of... Well, I'm sure this is the first time that a lot of people will be watching the film because I've seen a lot of people like, I've never even heard of this film. And since it's just hitting Shutter now, and I think this is a streaming premiere, then no no spoilers for this. But you don't really need spoilers. I will, I will tell you up front, if you're a fan of bad movies, movies that are just really bad, but they're super fun, this one, just, just see it. Um, but obviously you can watch this whole review because no spoilers. So this one was written and directed by Stuart, Ra sorry, Stuart Raffle. Uh, the guy did, he directed The Ice Pirates, The Philadelphia Experiment, and the only one I've even really heard of, Mac and Me. He's also done a bunch of other ones, but I just, you know, grabbed a few. Uh, stars, I was surprised on this one, because as soon as I started looking up who's in the cast, I was like, whoa. Okay, so it stars Denise Richards. Now, this is Denise Richards before she became famous. It also stars Paul Walker, also before he became famous. And it also has Terry Kaiser in it, who is, uh, if people don't know him by name, Terry Kaiser is the guy who plays the dead body, Bernie Lomax, in Weekend at Bernie's. And Weekend at Bernie's 2, which is not as good, but ridiculous and still fun. So, love Weekend at Bernie's, by the way. And I will say this, uh, all the acting is appropriate for what the movie is because it's like one of those so bad it's fun and it was made intentionally to be a horror comedy so the acting's not going to be like top notch and it's fine like it fits within the context so it's all good i will say my favorite performance was probably terry kaiser actually as as more of like a straight up acting like performance like his his acting was the best acting for what he was supposed to do in my opinion but other people may feel differently. Um, so yeah, it was no surprise that this was before Denise Richards and Paul Walker got anywhere. So Raffle said, okay, so this is basically how this happened. You would ask yourself, why is there a T-Rex in this? And actually, why does the T-Rex in this actually look so good? Because it does. The T-Rex looks very good in this. Well, it's an actual animatronic T-Rex. What happened is Raffle, the director, writer, was contacted by a friend of his from South America, who he said like owns a theater in South America or something. So I don't know how this is the case, but his friend contacted him was just like, hey, I'm going to have access to an animatronic T-Rex for about two weeks. Like he was going to have it in his possession. He was like, I think that'd be a really cool thing to use for a movie. Why don't you make a movie involving this animatronic T-Rex? So he's like, oh, okay. So they had to throw it together real quick because this guy was only going to have it for two weeks. So they throw the script together, which you can t you can tell, but it's fine. Like it works for being a so bad it's good film and being a horror comedy. It works for that. You can throw that type of stuff together. You really can. And as long as you have like some good lines in it, there are a lot of good one-liners in this that I quite enjoy. So, uh, but <laughs> it's yeah, it's something. So so when I read about that, that like it's just here's this random animatronic uh, <laughs> T Rex. Such a random weird thing. This just reminds me of how many films you were able to just make in the 80s and 90s. Just make them. Whatever. <laughs> but the, it's a good thing because now we're unearthing a lot of these like Tammy and the T-Rex and enjoying them now. So I love it. So all the shooting locations for this film were actually within 25 minutes of Raffles' house. And a lot of that had to do with timing. They needed to make sure they kept things moving. They got the film filmed fast enough because they had to have access to the T-Rex. Um, because of the tight time for the movie to be made, Raffle said the script was thin, and he just threw in as much wacky stuff as he could, seeing as it was supposed to be a horror comedy. He also said that he asked the cast and crew for things that they wanted incorporated into the film. 
and you can kind of tell some of the some of those things you can't necessarily tell what's script and what's you know improv or added last minute but some of the things you definitely can because there end up being these moments where like the actors have like these kind of awkward pauses where it's like they're thinking and they're just like wait and yeah yeah that's all i wanted to do okay yeah we'll stop there <laughs> so you can kind of tell some of those moments that were just kind of on the fly but you know what that adds to some of the charm of this film it's fun so this was originally uh shot as an R-rated film with gore, and that's why we have the cut that we do right now that's available on Shutter and put out on Blu-ray through Vinegar Syndrome. So if you like this film enough, you can buy it through Vinegar Syndrome. So uh, it was originally made as an R, and then they had it, the studio had it cut down to a PG-13 to be shown for family consumption. I assume it was going to be on TV, that's my guess, but I, I just... Seeing this film, I don't know why you would cut it down to a PG-13. It makes no sense. The movie would suck so hard at a PG-13. I'm glad I've only seen it as the R version. You need that gore. You need the inappropriate stuff that's in it. Because otherwise, it's not really fun, to be honest. Like, you need it to feel like it's an adult horror comedy. You don't want it to feel like it's this highly edited, like, no gore, kind of no fun just weird, dumb film, because that's what the PG-13 must have been. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't seen it, but, you know. So, Vinegar, yeah, Vinegar Syndrome restored it for the United States. I will say, though, it was released as a PG-13 in 1994 in the U.S., but Italy actually got the original cut of it. So, I don't know if that's where they got the original cut. I don't know. Um, you can tell from the corny 80s rock music and the opening credit text font that this film is actually meant to be ridiculous now first of all i know people will feel me on the thing when you have this super corny like over the top music which was kind of like this 80s rock like over the top 80s rock is kind of what it was it's just like okay these people are trying to have some fun and then on top of that like the the text font for the opening credits i don't know if people know what i mean but like there are certain fonts that were used back in the day to signify, like, this film's trying to have fun, not, like, classy-looking or, or straightforward and boring, but just, like, you'll see what I mean when you see it. It's kind of, like, skewed to the side. It's, like, fun with text. <laughs> just saying. Uh, so there's a fight early in this film. This doesn't ruin anything, but there's a fight early in this film that takes a very out-of-nowhere turn that uh, I thought was pretty funny, and I didn't see coming, so enjoy. <laughs> it's one of the, it is one of those moments that I thought back to Raffle saying, I put a bunch of wacky stuff in there. That it just it's one of those things. So when you actually first see the T Rex, like I was saying, it's impressive. Like it looks good. The way they reveal the T Rex, you're like, oh, okay, we have like a good looking T Rex in this thing awesome but the pr the problem then comes that it's an animatronic t-rex not made to be in a film initially it's for like a theme park or something like that so it can only really do certain things so um i think within the confines that they had they did a really good job getting around any of the issues of things it couldn't do that they needed it to do for the film so some of those things that they make it do they kind of get creative they make it work it looks kind of wonky and off but once again it's a horror comedy and it's so bad it's good so it kind of adds to the charm once again so it works for that reason but uh you can tell the moments where they're just like ah, we can't get this to do exactly what we really want to improv it we, we'll figure something out and they do um, they get, uh, yeah, I already said that. You can tell that parts were done on the fly because it seems like the actors are pausing. I already talked about that, sorry. Uh, big shout out to George Pilgrim for some amazingly bad acting. He plays the role of Billy in this, and he is the main antagonist initially. It then ends up becoming Terry Kaiser's character. But George Pilgrim, this guy, just look out for Billy, the character of Billy his acting is so, like, you know, there's, like, fun bad acting, but then there's, like, amazing bad acting, like Tommy Wiseau. I'm not saying that he reaches, like, the Tommy Wiseau awesome, awful acting status, but he's not super far below that. I just really enjoyed the way he brought the, the corny cheesiness. Great. 
Uh, I also wrote down, it was good to see Sean Whalen in this. He played the role of Weasel in it, and people might know him from, I know him from Idle Hands, but people, and myself included, most well know him as Roach in The People Under the Stairs, which is a really good film, and I did do a full review and analysis of that film on my channel, so you can look for that. Uh, that was a fun one to do. I, I dove really deep on that one, too, so check that out. Uh, a bunch of character interactions are just plain odd in this, hence being able to tell that it was kind of thrown together and the script was thin. Uh, there's a lot of randomness and really off character reactions. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of moments where characters react in certain ways, like they say things that are totally disconnected from what's going on, or they react in a way that you're just like, huh, that's how you react to this? Okay. But once again, that kind of adds to the charm of it being so terrible. It's fun. Just saying. As one could guess, the fun ramps up when the T-Rex gets loose. When the T-Rex really starts doing stuff is when the most fun is had. It is fun before that, I will say. But it's a different type of fun once the T-Rex has its time. And it's, it's a good time. Uh, the way the T-Rex walks is actually kind of painful to watch because it is awful and it's just so awkward and doesn't work when it, when they're showing it from afar. Whenever they're showing things that are kind of more close up with the T-Rex, it's actually okay. Like, they make it look good. They make it work a lot better. It's just when they have, like, the longer shots and the T-Rex is moving, it looks so bad. But those are times when you can just, you know, just laugh at it. Also, uh, at times they make the arms rubber. So that someone actually has, like an actor actually has their hands in like these rubber T-Rex arms. And the rubber doesn't actually match the body of the animatronic T-Rex. So it looks a little off. But also like how rigid it is and how emotionless the T-Rex kind of is. Versus how expressive the, the uh, hands or, you know, claws, little tiny, what would I call them? Just little tiny arms, I guess. How, how reactive and, and bendable those are. It just it looks so weird because it's so off and it doesn't match. But, once again, it's just another one of those things. It just adds to the funny, you know. I just wrote down with a, a question mark and exclamation point. Why would you ever cut the gore out of this film? Just reiterates what I said earlier. Why? Why? It's a terrible idea. There's so much fun to be had with the gore. Uh, so the police in this are a lot of fun. Two police uh, officers in particular, they're kind of like the idiot police officers who don't really care about doing their job for some reason. But to be honest, their scenes are my favorite scenes in the movie because they have some really funny lines. The way they just act is so ridiculous. And like I said, it's like they just don't even care. Their, their reactions to the situations are like comedy gold. Not like intentional comedy gold, but... It ends up being comedy gold. Um, the gore is done in a fun and ridiculous way. That is key with this film. And you can tell that they set out for it to be that way. To be ridiculous, to be over the top. So all good. There's a scene involving a morgue that is also one of my favorite scenes. In addition to the fight scene in the beginning that has a crazy twist, the any scene with those two idiot police officers, this morgue scene is one of my, is my favorite. It's... You'll see what I mean. You will see what I mean. If you watch it or if you've already watched it, you'll know. Uh, and the conclusion of the film actually worked for me. I was wondering where they were going to go with it because it was very much meandering towards the end like a lot of these types of films tend to do. Uh, but I was good with it. I liked how they ended it. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'm down with that. So just some wrap-up things about the film. The music in this is over the top, but that adds a fun level of absurdity to the film. Uh, there are some audio issues, though. This is the worst thing about the film. There are actually some audio issues where it sounds like they're, like, they get so loud that they, like, blow out the microphone. So, um, yeah, I, I assume that's, that's, I mean, that has to be an issue from the original audio recording. Because otherwise, I assume Vinegar Syndrome would have been able to clean that up. But, yeah, it's, um, at, it, it's not consistent throughout the film but you're very much aware of it early on in the film. It happens a few times within the first, you know, like, 20, 25 minutes of the movie, and then it seems like it kind of goes away, so it got corrected at some point. Uh, there's actually a little bit of a theme of science doing something bad 
with overall good outcome for society in mind. This is actually something that's been in films a lot. So you would see a film like this and be like, I was really not going to be a theme. It's just for fun. But no, like it kind of goes back to, you know, when you have those movies where either it's technology or science or um, science experiments where they're like, oh, we can do these wonderful things for society and advance technology and do all this stuff. But then it just, you know, ends up being more of a problem than anything. So there's that kind of theme here. But there's also the theme of pure revenge, and that's what this movie is really about. So I wrote down some inspirational words on that. Don't be a jerk, because you never know when the person you're messing with will come back as a giant mechanical T-Rex and stomp you. Keep that in mind, and that should keep you a good, nice, honest person. Because you don't want a mechanical T-Rex stomping on you. Just saying. Uh, and then the last thing I wrote is, this is a good candidate to get the Joe Bob Briggs treatment. I could see this one being in season two of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. That would be fun. That would be awesome. But you never know. He throws curveballs. We don't know. But all I'm saying is it's on Shutter. He can have access to it. Would be a fun one. Now, this is a film. I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. It's not my. It's not super up there as far as fun awful films go for me so I don't think I would buy it per se because uh, I I need them to be like a particular level of terrible and fun and this one doesn't quite reach that level for me but it's definitely worth watching once you will definitely enjoy it I know a lot of people will probably see this and be like oh man I have to buy this so that's good buy it from Vinegar Syndrome awesome I bought some stuff from them recently if you saw my unboxing of that um, already did Ice Cream Man, and I'm going to do the other ones. So, um, Taming the T-Rex, it's a good time. I'm glad Shudder got this one. Glad Vinegar Syndrome restored it and put it out in its gore cut, because that's the way it was meant to be. It's kind of writing a wrong from 1994, so good job, Vinegar Syndrome. Now, my rating system. This is where I have to give two ratings. One is a serious rating of rating it amongst all film, and then the second one is rating it as a so-good-it's-bad film. Now, the first one, being serious... It's got to be like a half star because it's terrible. If you look at it from a standpoint of, I want to watch a legitimately good theatrical movie right now, it's awful. <laughs> like one star. One star maybe. Okay, half star, one star. I'll go one star. Now, if you're looking at it from the perspective of, man, I love movies that are so bad they're fun, I'm going to go three star on it. I can't go any further than that. I am. I would... If I did quarters, I would go 3.25 because I was kind of between 3 and 3.5. And but I'd put it toward, more towards the 3 than the 3.5. But I recommend it. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out. And awesome. So please help me out right now. Uh, hit that subscribe. Help encourage me to keep this going because I'm not making money doing it. I'm just having fun. And uh, it's encouraging to see, you know, that people subscribe. Put some comments down there, your thoughts on this film, or if you haven't watched it yet, your thoughts going into the film after watching this video, interested in all that, and let's just geek out down there. You can do a thumbs up, that's great, but the big thing is to subscribe. But regardless, thank you everyone for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.